Dunhill and I will be presenting on behalf of Group 12. An experimental investigation was conducted to analyse the effects of beta tricalcium phosphate on gelatin scaffolds for the study of bone tissue engineering. This study was incentivised by the fact that bone diseases and complications are set to double by 2020. We hypothesised that beta tricalcium phosphate reinforced gelatin scaffolds will withstand a higher compressive forces and an enhanced cell viability when to 95% confidence when compared to gelatin only scaffolds. Beta tricalcium phosphate scaffolds and gelatin scaffolds were prepared using freeze drying fabrication methods. Um, the scaffolds were mechanically tested in a uniaxial compression test by a Zwick roll machine. They were subjected to a seven day swelling and degradation study and finally a Hoyt DNA assay was conducted to assess the cell viability when the scaffold viability when seeded with pre-osteoblast cells. Our results can be seen here. The compressive modulus of gelatin was found to be approximately 3,000 pa 3, pascals and the compressive modulus of gelatin beta tricalcium phosphate was found to be approximately 30,000 pascals. However, as only three samples were tested, this, this um, result was not found to be statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.001. The swelling ratios ex experienced can be seen here. Gelatin experienced a swelling ratio of 96% and gelatin beta tricalcium phosphate has a swelling ratio of 10%. This difference was found to be statistically, statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.112. Finally, the results of our fluorescence study can be seen here, and these fluorescence intensity used in conjunction with the standard curve uh, determined the number of viable cells in each of the scaffolds. Gelatin had a number of viable cell count of approximately 70,000, and beta tricalcium phosphate gelatin scaffolds had a cell number of approximately 1.1 million. This was found to be statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.063. While our results do correlate with our hypothesis that, but that TCP reinforced gelatin scaffolds do withstand higher compressive forces, have a reduction in swelling and degradation, have a reduction in swelling and is an enhancement in viable cell viability, the as not all tests were statistically significant, it warrants further study into this area. Should this experiment be conducted in the future, I would recommend to increase the sample size in order to increase the reliability and accuracy of these results. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.